American communists want to control your life by controlling your health care. You talk to the young Obama, you wanted a violent revolution in the United States, but your idea was more sophisticated. You get into the Democratic Party and you change things from within. If you were a stealth Marxist president, how would you do things? See, the problem with being a socialist in America is you're dealing with a constitution and institutions that are designed to stop socialism. So it makes sense to go for piecemeal reforms. I, I think if you look at, into the guts of Obamacare, but it's actually a stealth law that slowly pushes out the insurance companies out of the market, so that way naturally people would, would become part of a single-payer program. That Find single-payer, what is single-payer? The federal government would basically control all health care, and it would also determine what kind of treatment that you would receive. The godfather of the U.S. single-payer health care movement was Chicago physician and activist Quentin Young, a long-time Communist Party supporter. In 1972, Dr. Young attempted to travel to North Vietnam to offer his services to Ho Chi Minh's government, while Communist invaders were still killing American soldiers. In the early 1980s, Dr. Young joined DSA, Democratic Socialists of America. In 1987, Dr. Young founded a DSA front, the 20,000 member Physicians for a National Health Program to push for single payer. In 1994, DSA made achieving single payer healthcare their number one goal. In 2005, Dr. Young traveled to Cuba to check out real communist healthcare. In 2005, Hugh Foy and myself uh, were on a medical delegation to Cuba, and Quentin was on it. And we visited with uh, some health ministry people there and every level of care from the highest to the community clinics that uh, take care of every citizen in that country. Dr. Young pinned his real single payer hopes on a personal friend, patient and political ally. Illinois State Senator Barack Obama. You've been a longtime friend of Barack Obama. How has he changed yeah. over the years? Well, Barack Obama, as we know, was a community organizer, a very lofty calling in my book, and uh, he made the decision when the opportunity came that he, he could get more done politically. Uh, Barack Obama, in those early days, influenced, I hope, by me and others, uh, categorically said single-payer was the best way. I happen to be a proponent of a single-payer universal health care plan. Obama was not so honest on the presidential campaign trail. I never said that we should try to go ahead and get single payer. Meanwhile, Dr. Young kept up the pressure from below. And I'm calling on everybody who hears my voice to let President-elect Obama know that they want nothing less than single payer, national health insurance, everybody in, nobody out. As Barack Obama worked closely with DSA-dominated SEIU. Before debating health care, I talked to Andy Stern and SEIU members. We will, before the next convention, proudly join our Canadian brothers and sisters to be a nation that guarantees affordable health care for every man, woman, and child. Isn't it time? Isn't it time? Isn't it time we do that? Obama's Affordable Care Act passed in 2009. The bill passed against huge Republican and Tea Party opposition. I intend to speak in support of defunding Obamacare until I am no longer able to stand. And with a complete lack of transparency. Lack of transparency is a huge political advantage. We have to pass the bill so that you can uh, find out what is in it. You know, call it the stupidity of the American voter or whatever. But basically, that was really, really critical to getting the thing to pass. Another key Obamacare architect was Harvard Public Health Professor John McDonough. I helped craft and pass Massachusetts health reform in 2006 and the Affordable Care Act in 2010. John McDonough was a former chairman of Boston DSA. Gerald Friedman is an Amherst economics professor, DSA comrade, and big time Obama fan. I showed up the other day wearing my Obama shirt. Yeah, I, I love the man. I, 
and half my friends have jobs in the administration. Professor Friedman loves Obamacare. The thing I like most about it is it makes promises it can't realize. So in a couple of years, we're going to have an opportunity to really do something. Nothing's going to happen for a couple of years. They're going to give the exchanges a chance. They're going to try this thing, and then it's going to fail because it can't succeed. The White House doesn't even say it will succeed. The uninsured are going to go up by the White House projections. I'm not making this up. This is what the White House says. When Obamacare fails, what comes next? We have to be ready because the other side is going to have a plan. And they are ready. We have to be ready with an effective plan, with a single payer plan that's going to cut administrative waste um, and expand services. Then will come the big leap into fully socialized healthcare. To make the change we need, we need the big leap. And those big leaps happen only occasionally, a few times in history. Have we had the type of mass movement that forces the powers that be to make a giant change? These are called moments of madness. This will bring your health care under complete government control, as was intended all along. The very first thing that anybody does when they want to Marxify a land, Marxify a nation, the first thing you do is universal health care. Because from that moment on, everybody in that nation belongs to the state. <laughs>